the names in the title, so to speak, World Championships, everyone tries to peak for it. It's a huge title to have and um, it's um, it's a huge week and um, you know it's a really big mental and physical effort in the lead up but then to actually hold it together for that week as well is pretty pretty special and um, yeah every single World Championships I've played I think I've really really enjoyed. It's a huge deal to play and to win a World Championships. This is the one, the one event that transcends the sport and it's the one thing that gets you the media attention. It's the one thing that everybody understands when you're introduced or you say you're a world champion, even more so than perhaps being world number one. Um, I think when, they, when someone says they're a world champion, it really hits home with people exactly how good you are as a squash player. For me, as an, as an early you know, early part of my career was probably just about getting through qualifying, maybe trying to get a decent win in the first round. And um, I guess as my career has grown and as I've grown as a player, those expectations have changed through the years. And um, then you go from, you know, trying to make quarterfinals and trying to make semifinals. And, and then I think there's a real shift where as a player, you have to actually believe that you can win it. And, you know, as a player with anything, you have to believe that you can win it long before you actually do win it. And um, that's the same with any event and any sport, I'm assuming. So, um, yeah, I think the, for the World Championships now is a completely different pressure. There's obviously a lot of expectation. There's obviously um, a lot of pressure, pressure that the same as that there would be in any World Series event or big event, mainly from myself, um, you know, mainly, you know, partly probably from other people as well. But you want to go in there, you want to perform at your best. It's the highlight of the year and um, one of the biggest titles you can win. So I think you just want to, try and sort of handle everything in those situations and you know as I said before I think that's probably one of the biggest things about winning a world championship is the fact that you've been able to actually hold it together through a week of a week of squash it's a completely different feeling to holding it together in any other event or even or even getting the world number one spot you have to go through the emotional highs and lows of every single round and then deal with that and, and play again the next day. So it brings with it with it its own conundrums and its own its own puzzles to solve and um, but it only makes it even more satisfying if you can handle all that. Winning the British Open in 2013 and then having the 2013 World Championships postponed to 2014 was a bit of a unique and different different challenge the thing was that um winning the british open at home in in hull and to beat nicole in the final was such a huge monumental win for me what must be going through laura massaro's mind right now oh she's done it she's done it absolutely amazing laura massaro is the first english lady since lisa opie back in 1991 to win the prestigious British Open. What a steely performance. Um, it was, I think, first British woman to hold the British title um, in 20 odd years or so. So it was a pretty big deal. And, and in actual fact, yeah, of course, you want to build on that momentum. But the one thing that that British Open win did for me was just give me a huge amount of belief, not only that I could go through a big draw, hold it together, as I said, with nerves and emotion, but I could do it and beat the best players in the world. I think I beat Raneem in the semi and Nicole in the final. And in a lot of ways, it the postponement, I guess, sort of helped me process it all. It helped me build on that British Open win. It helped me digest it, it helped me come through sort of the emotional side of it and then build again. And I actually think by the time the World Championships came round in Penang in 2014, I played in Chicago and won the event there and pretty much went straight to the world championships and so knew I was in good form, had the belief and so I guess maybe things happen for a reason. Um, there's always a little bit of fate involved I believe with squash and you need a little bit of luck, well probably just with sport in general but the same when I got my world number one spot, I literally only got the world number one spot because the world championships was postponed that year as well. So it's certainly the highs and lows of, of the World Championships have, have played a massive part in my career so far. And uh, I mean, obviously heading to Penang for the World Championships, I went in with expectations. I'd made um, a final of a World Championships before. I'd always had steady results, I think, in the last few years. So 
Um, you know, I, like I said, I think if I can hold it together for the week, I was in with a chance. Um, it was still at that point a huge, a huge barrier to overcome. Nicole, particularly in a in a home town, but it was a really bizarre sort of thing that happened with the World Championships in Penang because it would it was where um, I won my World Junior Team Championships for England um, with Jenny Duncalf, Alison Waters, myself, and we beat Malaysia in Malaysia in Penang on in that very same stadium and it was epic and it was I came from 2-0 down and 7-2 down in 2-0 uh, down and 7-2 down traditional score into 9 and 1-3-2 in uh, the deciding rubber of the final um, and so the the whole thing just you know you don't want to think about that in the lead up and you don't want to arrive there and think it's fate but as the tournament sort of started to pan out and the fact that we had all these feelings from juniors and every single one of them was positive and it was back there and I was sort of playing well and I'd won a British Open and I seemed to be in good form. It, it seemed like the stars were aligning in a really bizarre way. So um, I sort of just tried to embrace all that going into the event. And obviously, like I said, you can't win the event in the first round, but you can certainly lose it so it was about trying to put in some good performances and build my confidence in those early rounds yeah I mean as the event progressed I felt like I was playing well and um, I got through the first couple of rounds fairly steadily I think um, but then that's where the the experiences as a junior really came into play because I played Loewe Wern in from Malaysia obviously she's also from Penang in the quarterfinals and I saved I think three match balls in that match and that's when I really thought this could be my week because because of the whole situation from juniors, the attack, the, the comeback. I think I was 2-1 down against We Wern and um, saved a couple of match balls and ended up winning in five. And it sort of just felt like things were really coming together for me. So Reneeman had her also really hard quarterfinal with Madeleine Perry in her quarterfinal. And I remember thinking that although it wasn't massively long in length, it had been really, really dynamic and Madeline had played really, really well and Raneem had also played well to get through the match. Um, and I knew that, you know, obviously I was coming off the back of a five-setter with Louis Wern as well. So I, I knew it was going to be about who handled it a little bit better on the day. It was just a World Championship semi-final. We've both had tough matches. So... I went into the match and, like I said, almost with my second life, saving match balls, and I actually played unbelievably well. It probably stands out as one of my best performances with everything that was going on, the fact that it was a World Championships, the fact that I'd saved match balls the day before, that it had been a long match, that it was Raneem and she's an unbelievable player. And um, it all came together and I played great and I was you know, really proud of myself for that performance. And I remember just getting out of the venue, getting back to the hotel, um, trying to get some chill time. I was in the shower and I was following the scoring online. And uh, I saw Nicole lose. And if I'm honest, it was like, oh, that, like, that never happens. And Nicole doesn't lose in a world championships and she's won so many and we've all been used to playing her in semis and finals. And so my initial reaction was, well, I've got a chance. Um, you know, I'm in the final already and I'm in with a chance and Nicole's lost. Um, and that feeling didn't last very long at all because then all of a sudden I realised that I was going into a World Championships as the favourite and then that completely changed my mindset and I say to this day and I, I don't think ever, anything will ever overtake it ever again that it was the worst night's sleep I've ever had pre-match um, the worst nerves that I've ever had pre-match um, and I and I and I honest I will never go through that again because I'll never be in my first World Championship final again, um, being the favourite and obviously going on to win the title. So it's handling, like I said before, all of that, and uh, I think it's probably goes down as my proudest event because of the way that I handled it. And you know, everyone might have said that not beating Nicole with her winning so many matches in the World Championship final is you know on paper a slightly easier draw but the fact that you know Shabini knocked her out the fact that she was still under 19 with no pressure on her whatsoever and that I had to go into that final believing that I could win my world championships that I was favorite to win the world championships was one of the hardest situations that I've ever been in and um 
yeah, I guess like do you'll just look back with real, you know, fondness and um really proud of myself for the performance that day. I yeah, I think it, I think initially it's just a little bit of shock. You don't know what to react to and it's only when you sort of come off court and you see your team around you and what it means to them and they've almost gone through more emotional roller coaster than you have because you've been so focused and so in the zone and um I think the same feeling with me with every tournament that I win just relief pride you know a really good sort of warming feeling um within me um and a lot of it is just thank god I didn't mess it up <laughs> thank god I'm you know no one can ever take away being world champion from you and there's something that will go with me for the rest of my life whether I win another one two three or you know maybe if I don't win another one I'll always be a world champion and um, I guess that's something that I can be proud of for the rest of my career. So it's not just even what you feel like in that moment, but it's what you feel like for the rest of your career, knowing that you've got that one under your belt. There was that sort of belief within me, and, and I think there still is to this day a massive amount of pride within myself and how I feel that, you know, no matter what else I achieve in my career, to have won two British Open titles and a world championship and two US Open titles and it you know it's things like that 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 when I retire I'll just be so proud of because I don't think anyone ever thought that I would I don't think that I really thought that I would that I could achieve what I have that you know I'm just trying to do my best I know for a long time I was just trying to get to 10 PSA titles 15 maybe I can make 20 before I retire and now I think I'm on 22 so you know especially and to achieve all of that in an era of probably one of the greatest squash players ever with Nicole David and you know Noor Shabini not being far behind with what she's achieved already at such a young age is is something that I'll be really proud of and and also to be doing it representing England as well so it's not so much that things changed after winning the world championships, but I think it just gave me so much pride and so much belief within myself going forward. And um, as I said, holding it together on that day, particularly the night before and the day of the final in that world championships is something that um, I really can't put into words how I felt on that day. And only I will ever really truly remember those feelings and those um the emotional state that I was in and the emotions that I had to control that day um and whenever I relive you know talking about the world championships that's really what comes to mind and what makes me so proud of what I've achieved and and how I've gone about my squash career so I hope that um you know more than anything that's what stayed within me for me for my pr for, for my pride and for the team and what we've achieved around me more than sort of anything externally that changed Yeah, I mean, obviously playing the World Championships at home is something really special and I can take um, a massive amount of confidence that I've, uh, that I've done so well in the British Open on home soil and handled the pressure well and handled being at home well and even the British Opens that I haven't won, I've made a couple of finals in between and um, they've been good weeks for me and they've been positive weeks and obviously I feel at home, I, I am at home, everything's familiar to me and um, you know, I can draw a lot on those experiences. The the last World Championships in England didn't go so great. It was a long time ago. So I will be certainly trying to sort of not make the mistakes that I made in that World Championships and really build on the positives that have happened in my career since that, that World Championships, which I think was in 2008. So there's been a lot of time gone and a lot of lessons learned since then and a lot of matches that have been hugely positive on home soil. So yeah, overall really excited to play at home and try and, you know, embrace the pressure. Pressure is a privilege, as Billie Jean King says. And um, yeah, hopefully just looking forward to performing in each, each round the best that I can and do myself proud.